This is Aaron Lowe. Uh, good, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for coming. I'm Aaron. Today I'm going to talk about drone hijacking, and uh, I'm glad to join this event. This is my first time presentation in DEF CON, and uh, uh, actually, <laughs> oh, thanks. Actually, I'm a little nervous now because, uh, you know, first time, so. <laughs> and uh, this is my first time using English to presentation. So, 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 uh, I know it's hard to decode my English, so please bear it. And, okay. Uh, let me start with a brief self-introduction. Uh, my name is Aaron, uh, as I mentioned before. And uh, currently, I'm working in the trade micro. Uh, and uh, I come from Taiwan. Also, also a Hikang member. The, uh, the Hikang is a... Uh, Hacker community in Taiwan, and uh, this this year, Hikan also have a team join the DEFCON CTF, and uh, I just want to tell a story about about why about uh, I start my security research. Life Science 2005. This is uh, because of a fucking deal. In my 15 years old, I decided to develop an uh, IT. And uh, uh, out of blue or madness, I don't know why I decided to develop that. that. But finally, I finished the dark door in my 16 years old, and uh, and uh, and uh, this IT enable me to remote manage multiple machines, and uh, it also offers some, some nice functions, uh, such as you can see someone's keylogger or or look at some file transfer, or see the remote desktop screen. Uh, but trust me, I just only play this on my on my own VN, so no one impact. Okay. Oh, sorry, I'm so nervous, but uh, you know. Uh. After I creating the dark door, also managing some web server actor, then I joined the Taiwan government cybercrime investigation department as a consultant. Then I joined the micro cyber safety solution team. So I think dark door is the beginning of everything. Okay. Uh, it's a, a lot of my self-introduction. Let's start, let's start hacking. This, uh, this is uh, today's uh, agenda. I will introduce, introduce the drone architecture and, uh, and point out the vulnerability components. Afterward, I will demo how to hack it and provide a prevention solution. The tool will then be shared in the GitHub. Uh, today our target is 
the DJI Pentone 3 Advanced. This, this drone render is uh, popular, is popular, and uh, I think the drone architecture is similar. So if you know how to exploit this drone, you may take the same way to, to hack another drone. Okay, let's talk about the structure of this drone. Uh, there are three main model uh, drone itself and the remote controller and the uh, app SDK. Which components are valuable and uh, easy to exploit? Uh, I think it's uh, usually found in radio remote controller and the GPS module and the app SDK. First, we, s we search for variability from DJI, DJI app and the SDK. You can see the operation process in this image First, the DJI develop app needs request activation data from DJI authentication server. Then the remote controller use USB to transmit data. Final drone, drone will fly after confirm the activation data. Uh, sorry, actually, actually, presentation is not my specialty, so, so I'm really very uh, nervous. And uh, uh, now I want to introduce how to crack the SDK authentication mechanism. First, uh, we have downloaded the SDK from DJI website. Then. Then uh, this DJ, I choose the Android SDK, so it's a, it's a, a JAR file. You can find the key function with the JDGUI, and uh, I found the function it calls check permission. Uh, this function will will be called by by uh, when you open the app, it will it will call this function. So we just need to patch this uh, function. Then we, we are able to bypass the, the authentication mechanism. So how to patch this function? I, uh, it's, I think this part is easy. You just use the JBE. The JBE is Java by code editor, and and uh, uh, find find uh, uh, just mention uh, check permission function. Then then I I replace the check permission directory return to to SDK level two. It means we can directly use level level two SDK. Uh, I forgot to tell about uh, the SDK permission. Zero is mean you have no permission, and uh, if if SDK level above the bigger than zero then mean you have the SDK permission. So I just set it to, to, uh, to two, then return. After patch this function, you can, you can check the result with JDGUI. Then you can see the SDK label directory return to 
and uh, this SDK is SDK authentication mechanism is easier to to hack, but I think it's simple but powerful because all kind of DJI drones can be affected by this vulnerability. Uh, now I demo. I demo how to use this this vulnerability. Uh, at first, we can. Oh, sorry, I checked the video. Wait a moment. Okay, okay, <laughs> thank you. Uh, uh, after we click the SDK, we can directly connect to the app and uh, look the camera data. So uh, this, you can see the camera, so it's, it's really work. And uh, Next demo, I will show how how to use this variability to impact the drone. Uh, I developed an uh, app by this SDK, and uh, this contain contains some uh, API can be called uh, like uh, we can. Uh, take off or landing, and uh, at the first I, I, I use the take off function. Then I press the button, the drone just be take off. And then I press the landing button, the drone is landing. And uh, I also use this feature to write the uh, uh, function. It can it can fly drone into the location we specific. Uh, at first, I input the GPS location, and then I press uh, fly to here, fly to there, the drone fly to there. But actually, this uh, SDK uh, have some have some limitation uh, because this demo I just uh, use Cracker SDK. Uh, this means I I don't need to to connect to the authentication server. Then I can directly this use this SDK. Uh, so. How to prevent or improve this? The vendor can protect their library file by overflows cater or picker, or use the the as a click in encryption to avoid the SDK authentication. Key between apps and drone and the server, not only just 
Four days from April and the silver. Okay, let's uh, intro next session, framework analysis. Uh, how to analysis the framework? We can use the beam work, extract some data, but actually it is limit. So, so uh, we we use IDA Pro to analysis the incomplete data extracting by the beam work and uh, use string reference to find the key function. The function is de designed to check the framework. We can use it to reverse the framework format. Actually, this decal function is very big. Please forgive me for not explain explain the detail. And uh, finally, we can, we can extract each function module which contain detailed information, including the major minor ID and the module, module name and the binary name. And uh, after that, I extract the file system from from FC three hundred FW dot bin. By uh, by by using our parser. And uh, and uh, then we can extract some interesting things from file system. For example, the SSH key and uh, and uh, some and uh, some configuration configuration data. And uh, if you want to know the root password, you can, you can view the X shadow to click, click this file. Okay, uh, I will introduce how to prevent or improve this, this part. Actually, I think just increase the framework binary, but still need extra careful about storage place must be safety. And uh, this side, uh, and uh, should be careful about the side channel attack. Okay, this is the end of framework analysis. The next session is radio signal analysis. How to analyze the radio signal? Uh, just by the SDR. SDR is a software defined radio. The two on top are hacker IF. The, the button one is blade IF. Uh, by the way, these are all available in DEF CON vendor area. So if you're interested with this, you can buy it from from render area. And uh, we found DJI Phantom 3 used to modulation, demodulation to transfer data with 2.4 gigahertz ISA band. I will introduce this on detail later. 
One modulation is used to control the flying direction of drone, like uh, flying up, down, left, or right. You can observe that it is FHSS uh, frequency hopping spray spectrum, and uh, the frequency frequency range is about two to four gigahertz to two to four a three gigahertz. And uh, each channel is about one megahertz bandwidth. <laughs> the other modulation use DSSS. Uh, it is a director screen spray spectrum. And uh, it led drawn to transmit image to remote controller. The frequency is about 2 to 40, 15 to 2 to 5 15 gigahertz. And each channel is about 10 megahertz bandwidth. <laughs> and uh, finally, we found the image have no checksum mechanism, so we can jam in the radio frequency to show wrong image to controller. Uh, let's see the demo. This is the program I developed. It can it can jam in the jam in the radio signal, then show blue a uh, green screen to the to the to the DJI FPV system and uh, how to prevent or improve this I think just avoid the image check sound if check sound is wrong uh, just don't show this image or or you can transfer the image data by a some metric increasing. But, but it need take more performance. Uh, actually, I think just uh, add the checksum is announced because reverse the modulation and demodulation are not easy. And uh, let's move to next session, the GPS modules analysis. The GPS modules is a general way to hijacking the drone. And the uh, GPS protocol is not increased. Uh, GPS protocol if used for commercial, is not increased. It's called CA call. Is for commercial. Uh, there is, a, they have another GPS protocol called uh, P code. P code is for metal street. So, so normal commercial can use this uh, encrypt channel. Uh, so, so every. Every commercial usage, the GPS is uh, is easier being a attack by attacker. Uh, a attacker can easy to to fake this. And uh, I will figure out which function is associated with the GPS. In DJI drone, have uh, four function will impact by faking the GPS. One is uh, no fly zone. Uh, no fly zone mean DJI have set many many place to the no fly zone, like like the airport or some important place. So if you fake the locate, if you are in 
airport or some important place, the drone will be a false landing. And uh, another function is return to home. Return to home means if you press the return to home, the drone will return to original point. The other function is called follow me. The follow me is the is the function. It means if you move, the drone will will also move. So the drone always follow you. And uh, the latest latest function is waypoint. The waypoint means. You can setting the multiple location, then drone will go each location. So those four functions will impact by fake GPS. Now I will introduce how to spoof the GPS location. They have a good open source GPS simulator in GitHub called GPS Sync SDR. But it has some limitation. Before you want to fake a location, you should wait for a few minutes to generate the IQ data. What is the uh, IQ data? IQ data is uh, if you want to play SDR, you must you, you must build the IQ data for 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 uh, modulation. And uh, uh, so we improve the call. Then it can in real time generate the GPS signal and uh, can be controlled with the joystick. That is mean you, you don't need to wait five minutes or a few minutes to generate the IQ data. You can directly real time figure the point. And uh, this is the demo. Uh, wait a moment, sorry. You can see I use the joystick and uh, can directly impact the GPS location. When I, I move to left, you can see the GPS point is moved to left. And uh, I move to upside, the GPS point is moved to outside. Then I move to right side, it just uh, moved to to write. So we can use this this joystick to to impact the GPS location. Oh thank you. And now I demo to face landing the drone by fake location into the non-fly zone. You can see the outside, the red circle is the non-fly zone. And uh, I open the program, then, then uh, it, it needs to wait a few, few seconds because uh, GPS, fake GPS should, should take, uh, take uh, some time to update the, the satellite track. And uh, 
uh, it's, it's take about 30 minutes, uh, 30 seconds. So you can see, finally the drone is in the, the no-fly zone, then drone take down. This demo also in, in place, in past dev count, so, so I just want to uh, demo, demo this again because I think someone maybe not seen this. And uh, and uh, I want to demo the uh, use the joystick to hijacking the drone. Uh, I open the DJI follow me function and you can see I'm not touching the, the remote controller. Then I move the joystick can directly move drone to, to location. I I want the drone to uh, like I I move the joystick to the to the my my side the drone joystick to my side then then I just control this for a few times and uh, uh, finally use the joystick can easy, easier to, to, to control the drone. Uh, but finally the drone just uh, uh, moved to too far place I can control. <laughs> so I switch to <laughs> To my to my remote controller. <laughs> then, uh, because this this drone is our company co company uh item, so I can I can fly then to this uh I can then then disappear. So finally, I use the real RC controller and get back the control. But actually, you can, if you want, you can let the, the RC controller not work. You just jam in the 2.4 gigahertz frequency, then control module will be lost. That time you can use the hijacking program to fully control the drone. And uh, I want to introduce how to detect the fake GPS signal. The one way is avoid the, the GPS subframe data. The subframe data is is a uh, data sent by GPS satellite, which contain the satellite track information. But fake GPS some subframe data will incorrect, uh, like this. This is the subframe data, and uh, you can see the upside subframe data is 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 true satellite data, and uh, the downside is the fake GPS satellite data. You can see some file is wrong, so you can you can avoid that the subframe data to to check the signal is fake or real. But I know you must you must think uh, if I just record and re replay the GPS data, the subframe will be correct. 
Yes, it is. But we have another solution. When when you when you uh, record and replay the GPS, you can use the time. You can avoid the time between satellite time and the real time. Because if you record and replay, the time will be wrong. So this is another way to detect the fake GPS signal. And uh, another way is uh, check the motion speed between point to point. Uh, for example, it is impossible to change your location from Taiwan to Las Vegas in one second. Unless you are Doraemo or Sonic. And uh, uh, finally, I developed the fake GPS signal device by just mentioning ways. And uh, I developed it on the Raspberry Pi. Raspberry Pi and uh, uh, I buy a GPS module. The module is a popular module called Ublox. This is the demo of the tool I create. You can see uh, this is Raspberry Pi, and uh, this is uh, my phone control, the HeckUp device, and. Uh, I transfer some fake GPS data, and now, now, now it's normal because the fake GPS data will take a few time to affect. Uh, about about thirty minutes, and uh, Wait a moment, I don't know why my screen is become black. Uh, I wait a moment. I press this again. Is the screen being hacker? Or <laughs> no, I think uh, what? Uh, Uh, no problem. I just uh, take to the. I think today is unlucky. <laughs> uh, Wait a moment. So it's some people just I need screen to, to the 
Hey, sorry for the interruption, guys. Uh, we have AT AV techs on the way, um, and they should be able to fix this. Thanks. Actually, this is not my computer behave, so. Mm. I have uh, no way to start this attack because my computer is fine, but the environment just got attack. Uh, uh, no, your computer is fine. Oh. Uh, Okay. So I'll just take this opportunity, remind people, uh, exit out the back, um, and we're probably gonna have you compress over a little bit um, at the end of the talk, which, you know, a few minutes here. Got it. Oh, unfortunately, this talk I can maybe I can finish because. Close to and, and uh, I I'd like to to publicly uh, provide my GitHub account. Then I will I will put my fake GPS uh, detection program to my GitHub and. Uh, okay. Oh, sorry. Today I I, I think. Okay. Thank you for coming. And uh, uh, I'd like to provide my GitHub account. 
this account uh, will not be hacked by by any anyone. Uh, maybe. Uh, my account is Aaron Aaron Law, Aaron Dash Law, and I will publish the attack and the defense tool to this GitHub. Thanks for coming.